one of the most horrible, horrific, disgusting, terrible things I've ever read in my life. This is probably one of my favorite horror books of the year. I'm sorry, but that was the most boring thing I think I've ever read. Hi everyone, I'm Kat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited for this video because 24 hour vlogs are some of my favorite videos to film. I used to do them a lot more, but I haven't done one in probably like over a year. And I don't know why, because like I said, they're some of my favorite. I just find them really fun. I love reading challenges and seeing how much I can fit into one day. And also I really usually love short books, which is obviously more conducive to a 24 hour readathon. So I feel like I usually really enjoy what I read during these. So as for what I'm gonna be trying to read today, I have four books I wanna try and get to. The first being To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. The second being Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. The third being Talia by Daniel Volpe. And the last one I wanna try and read is The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag, which is a graphic novel. I realized like my list of short books were pretty much all horror so I wanted to break it up a little bit and I'm really excited for all of these books. The Girl from the Sea and Nothing But Black and Teeth were probably two of my most anticipated books of 2021. Um, to Be Devoured has been on my TBR for a while. I've only read short stories from Sarah Tantlinger when she's been included in anthologies I've read and I always really like her short stories so I wanted to read a standalone from her. Talia is kind of a wild card. I don't really know much about it. I've never heard anyone talk about it. It doesn't even have a full description on Goodreads for some reason. I had to go to another website to actually find out what it was about and it seems like it's about a woman in the porn industry who kind of turns into a killer and starts getting revenge on powerful people and powerful men and shitty men in the porn industry which sounds like it could be right up my alley but I don't know the author is described as writing splatterpunk which is a subgenre of horror that I've never read from. Sorry if you can hear the car revving. But yeah, I've never read anything that's considered splatterpunk. And if you don't know what that is, I don't even fully know what it is, but from what I understand, it's just like really graphic, intense, violent, gory horror. So I don't know if I'll like that or not. So we'll see. So my plan for today, it's almost 12 right now. I think I'm gonna start the readathon at one o'clock. Um, I do have to do some errandy type things, but I also want to try and hit up a used bookstore, or it's not just a used bookstore, it's like an indie bookstore in town. I've been trying to find a good like indie used bookstore. I've been to two and they really didn't have any books I was interested in. It was more like older, collectible, vintage type books. Um, not so much things I want to read. So I'm hoping this one works out. Um, it's in downtown Roanoke and I actually haven't been to Roanoke at all since I moved here, even though I'm fairly close to it. And I really want to check out the downtown area. It's supposed to be really like cute and cool and have some cool stores. So I think while I'm driving around and shopping, I'm going to listen to the audiobook of Nothing But Black and Teeth. I'm kind of nervous for this one as well, even though it is one of my most anticipated of the year, just because I've seen, I think three people I follow um, read this and one of them has loved it, like gave it five stars, one of their favorites of the year, but the other two hated it, like one star, least favorite of the year. So I have no idea how I'm gonna feel about it, but we will try it out. I think the audiobook is only like two hours. I'm riding this right beside you. I guess I'm hoping it might, it might remind you. You're Okay, I am in love with this town. It's so cute. It has so many cute little stores. There was like a little Saturday market going on and I think they do it every week and I just loved it. I think I'll definitely make that a more regular thing, just going and walking around. I didn't even end up buying anything. I did go to the bookstore and they did have some pretty good stuff, but uh, just nothing I was really interested in buying at that time. I was actually gonna buy Comfort Me with apples, but I picked it up and it felt like I was holding like a brochure or something and it was $18. I didn't realize it was so short. I knew it was short, but this was like 
a hundred pages and I'm not paying like $20 for that. I'm sorry. But while I was walking around and driving and doing my errands and stuff, I actually ended up finishing Nothing But Blackened Teeth, um, which I'm excited about. I finished my first book, but like, I have absolutely no review to give you. I'm sorry, but that was the most boring thing I think I've ever read. This is a horror that's based in Japanese folklore, I believe. Um, we're following a group of friends. We're mainly reading from one girl's perspective. Her name is Kat, actually. Um, and her two friends are getting married and they go to stay in this like mansion manor thing. And there is something about a ghost bride. Shitty synopsis, shitty review. Um, and I don't know if this is because I listened to it on audio because I've mentioned in the past, I do often struggle with horror and thrillers on audio. But like, it, it's not like I, I don't think I wasn't into it or I wasn't like comprehending the full story. I just think it was really boring. Like, I don't recall anything scary happening the entire time. And there's an epilogue. So when I heard them say like epilogue, I was like, this shit is over? Like, what the fuck? I don't even know what to rate it because I feel, I feel like I didn't even just read a book. Like, nothing is sticking i will forget about this book in like an hour which is so sad because like i said was one of my most anticipated of the year um so i'm gonna head home now and i think the next book i'm gonna pick up is talia just because i'm intrigued by it i'm home and in comfy clothes i stopped and got some snacks because it just felt right so i got some sour belts and some cheetos and i have started talia the first chapter i think is one of the most disgusting things I've ever read. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Not just like violence and gore. It actually wasn't any violence and gore. It was um, like a sex scene. They were shooting for a porn video. And I, I don't want to kink shame. I'm not one to kink shame, but like bodily excrements are involved. Super nauseating to read about. besties i believe i've made a mistake in reading this i'm at the 73 percent mark this is the most disgusting disturbing book i've ever read like we're talking actual torture porn like actually people getting tortured but also while getting pleasured sexually um snuff films a guy who is a necrophiliac. And just so far, all of the men in the book are just obsessed with torturing women, abusing women, um, but while having sex with them as well. And it just took a very strange turn. Do I wanna say this or not? I don't know. I think I'm gonna say it because honestly, I would not recommend this. Um, I think I'm finding that splatter punk is not for me if this is what it is because Holy shit, this is like pretty difficult to read. I actually almost felt like I was gonna vomit at one point. But at this point in the story, the men who sort of run this underground porn business um, have decided to try and get rid of Talia. So they like try and stab her and she runs away and they shoot at her and think that she's dead. Um, and I guess maybe she was dying and it seems like she's been turned into a demon, which I did not expect. I didn't know this was like supernatural, fantastical. I'm assuming at this point she's going to start going on her revenge journey. Um, funnily enough, in I think my last vlog, I talked about how I watched the movie trilogy, um, I Spit on Your Grave. And this is reminding me a lot of that, where it's like the first half, the women are just being assaulted and abused and tortured and raped. And then in the second half, um, they get their revenge on the guys. But oh my God, is it difficult to read? And I don't know. I think there's something to be said about why people enjoy this. Like no, no shame, no hate if you do, but I just, I don't understand it, especially because it seems like from the little I know about the splatterpunk genre, um, 
the majority of the audience seems to be men and the majority of the characters and like the victims in whatever media it is seem to be women so there, there's something there so I don't really know how to review this book because first instinct is to give it like zero stars and I don't think I've ever said that about a book but so realistically one star one of the most horrible horrific disgusting terrible things I've ever read in my life but is that fair because is that just what this genre is like I know it's supposed to be very violent and gory but I didn't know it was gonna be this grotesque it's not even that it was violent and gory like I can I can deal with that like I like horror I like stuff like that but this was just on another level my instinct is to describe scenes in the book and explain like what about this was so disgusting but I don't even want anyone to hear me speak what I just read. What's so confusing to me is that this has like a 4.5 average rating on Goodreads and I usually find that like horror and thrillers um, are pretty polarizing and a lot of them have a fairly low average rating but like this one which I was expecting to have like an average rating of three or something has such good reviews so many five stars and like are these people who are just very well versed in this subgenre and just really like it, really like whatever the fuck I just read? And putting aside the fact that this book was absolutely disgusting and disturbing to read, it was not well written. We would be reading from one person's perspective and then in like the next sentence we're from another person's perspective and we're in their head and in their thoughts and then in the next sentence we're back in the original person's head. Uh, it just switched perspectives like super quickly without warning and the same phrases were reused so many times like I think I heard Talia's hands be described as powder powder dry and cold like 10 times and this book is not long. I think a lot of horror novels and horror movies specifically I feel like I've had this issue with just rely on the violence and gore and shock factor to make it interesting and don't put as much thought or time or effort into the writing or the directing, the plot, the characters, etc. And that really seems like what has happened here. And Talia does get revenge on these people in the end of the book, but like it didn't even really feel that good because it was just so disgusting. I just want the book I just wanted the book to be over at that point. Um so yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's fair for me to rate this or if this is just what the splatterpunk subgenre is like and it's just super not for me. If you are into this subgenre, let me know. Um, and if it is, no judgments, but like, are you okay? <laughs> um, I do want to read, but like honestly I feel like I need a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna go play Ib and Ob with my boyfriend for a little bit and just like try to wipe this book from my memory. My back hurts so bad, this is genuinely the only angle I can be at right now. So I want to read some more tonight, but honestly, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like semi-traumatized by that book. Um, because I do kind of want to read the Sarah Tantlinger book, but like, I do not want to read any more horror tonight. I'm done. And I could read the graphic novel, but I am just really in the mood for this. I read Beach Read earlier this year, and it is one of my favorite books of the year. I loved it so much. And this sounds like it's even more up my alley so I've been really excited to read it but I've been like waiting for the perfect moment where I'm just really in the mood for it and that feels like tonight it is like fairly long well I don't think it's like super long but you know standard length novel so I definitely don't think I'm gonna finish it in this vlog but this is just what I'm really in the mood for right now also I posted about Talia on my Instagram like I just said I just read the most disgusting book I've ever read and all you little freaks are like messaging me trying to figure out what it is and I'm telling people but I'm like this is a book 
Don't fucking read it though. too much about people we meet on vacation because I know I'm not going to finish it for this video which I feel like is kind of annoying and I'm sorry for that um but I got to page 40 and I'm just like absolutely loving this so far I guess I'll give a quick synopsis for you in case you don't know what it's about it is an adult romance we're following Poppy and Alex who have been best friends for years and they always used to go on a vacation every year with each other but two years ago, something happened on vacation and they haven't really spoken since. And Poppy's kind of going through a difficult time. So she's thinking back to the last time she was truly happy and she thinks about vacations with Alex. So she reaches out and asks him to go on one last vacation with her. So it's kind of like a friends to not really enemies, but more like acquaintances, like they kind of keep in touch every few months. So they'll just be like, hey, how are you? Or like happy birthday, but that's kind of it to friends to lovers and i'm really excited for it i'm loving it so far i love emily henry's writing i love the characters she creates like only 40 pages in i already really like our main character poppy and i also really like um her best friend rachel i think her name is so i'm really excited to continue reading this like i said i'm sorry i'm not finishing this in this vlog but this morning i read the girl from the sea by molly and knox ostertag and i really loved this i'm gonna give it five stars this is a ya graphic novel we're following a 15 year old girl named morgan and she thinks she's gay or knows she's gay but hasn't told anyone yet and doesn't really feel comfortable telling anyone yet so her plan has always been like when she graduates high school she's just gonna leave her town and then that is when she's really gonna like start her life and be out and feel comfortable but she lives on this little island and one night she falls into the water and this selkie i think it's called named kelty ends up saving her so a selkie is kind of like a person seal I don't, I don't know how else to describe it and morgan kind of thinks it's a dream so she ends up taking advantage of this and kisses kelty um and it turns out that morgan is kelty's like true love and that means that kelty can now be on land this kind of gives me vibes of like the little mermaid which i feel like is an obvious comparison but also enchanted the movie with amy adams and patrick dempsey because while kelty is on land she just reminds me a lot of amy Adam amy adams character where she's kind of like oblivious to how life is on land and she's just very silly and doesn't really care about how she looks or acts like doesn't know that she should care like there's one part where they're talking about how morgan doesn't want anyone to know that they are kind of into each other and dating um and kelty doesn't really understand because she's like you know underwater the seals like don't care who you are you just are who you are and that's it this is very very sweet i loved the art style it made me cry like three times not cry cry but like definitely teared up i do think the romance starts kind of quickly um and i think that's kind of explained by like the magic of the selkies and when they find their like true love by kissing them they just know that that is their true love so they kind of just go all in but it did feel kind of quick for me and i was looking at some reviews and i saw some people were frustrated with morgan and didn't really like her character because when she does start kind of dating kelty um she kind of starts ignoring her friend group and ignoring her family and not really spending much time with them uh but i feel like that's pretty normal she was really trying to keep this relationship a secret and didn't feel comfortable coming out so she didn't want anyone to think anything by her being with Kelty. But I really liked all the characters in here. I even really liked um, one of her friends. Her name is Serena. She's kind of 
portrayed like a little negatively like she doesn't seem like the best friend in here but i don't know i just feel like there is more to her backstory that explains the way she was acting and i would honestly really like to have a graphic novel like sharing her story and i would honestly enjoy another story about morgan and kelty so yeah i just thought this was really good really sweet like a quick sweet queer read now that my heart and my brain have been cleansed a little by some sweet romance um i'm ready to dip my toes back into some horror so i'm going to start to be devoured by sarah tanlinger y'all this book is fucking weird but i'm loving it so we are following a woman named andy who has a bit of a traumatic past her brother died when she was younger and then both of her parents died very traumatically shortly after um, and she starts becoming obsessed with these vultures that are cir circling near her house um, and just vultures in general. And she kind of starts believing that because they have survived for so long and they can like out survive anything, um, that that is because of them eating raw animal meat. It's funny because at this point I want to compare this to two books, both of which I have not read yet, but I really want to, but just based on how people have described them, and that is Tender is the Flesh and Night Bitch. And Night Bitch I'm actually going to be reading this month for Stacks of Strange, but I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the weirdness, even though it is very weird. Um, I will give a trigger warning for blood and drinking blood and animal death and well, animal killing and then eating that animal. I also want to read you this passage because I'm just obsessed with it. Like, I don't know, something about this passage just really does it for me. An unseen mass weighs within my chest and maybe that is the virus, the rot she mentioned. My own poison decaying my body from the inside out. All the angry bile souring the nectar of my heart and soul. The way death follows me, the way hostility rests inside me like a bomb coming to take comfort before detonating. Maybe the worst part of all this is how much I like it. The way fury fills me up, the sweet satisfaction of being a pissed off bitch to everyone and not giving a single fuck anymore. It beats complacent silence every time. The raw hatred of something, of someone else, I sit there and let it simmer. Oh, this is also queer, which I don't know. She is in a relationship with a woman. Doesn't ever say like what her exact identity is, but I'm obsessed. I have about 40% left. This book was really gross and really fucking weird but so good i absolutely loved the writing and i loved the weirdness i really did this is definitely not gonna be a book for everyone heed my trigger warnings a lot of talk about eating animals and dead animals but if you're down for it and you're down for the weirdness i would definitely recommend checking this one out. Oh, I'm so happy I love this because like I said, this has been on my TBR for a while and I've really been wanting to check out more stuff from this author and I will definitely continue to do so because I love this. I'm giving it five stars. This is probably one of my favorite horror books of the year. So we started off a little rough with Nothing But Blackened Teeth and Talia, but we're ending strong with uh, People We Meet On Vacation, even though I didn't finish it. I'm really, really enjoying what I've read so far. Um, the Girl from the Sea, five stars. To Be Devoured, five stars. And like, I really, really enjoyed both of them. And I'm really happy I was able to get to all of the books I wanted to in 24 hours. So thank you guys for hanging out with me for the day. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you've been reading. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.